everyone, this is Lomi, and this week I'm going to be talking about alternative sealant for dolls while I work on a face-up using Vallejo Matte Varnish. This particular version isn't airbrush ready, but it's easy to prep and easy to get, and I usually pay about $3 for a bottle. So a lot of people shy away from aerosol sealants for face-ups because, unsurprisingly, spray paints of all varieties are really toxic. On top of that, they're super sensitive to weather, which means if it's too hot, too cold, too wet, or too dry, you could have trouble doing face-ups. Having a non-toxic alternative that you can safely use indoors is kind of a big deal. It's unfortunately not as easy as just grabbing the paint and going because you still need a way to apply it. I've experimented with using an atomizer bottle or applying sealant with makeup sponges, and I might play with that more in the future to see if I can get good results, but at the end of the day, the best solution is always going to be using an airbrush. I'll be showing you mine as well as how I prepare the varnish and apply it, but first, a couple things about sealants in general. A lot of other people have had good luck with varnishes like Liquitex, and that one honestly never worked for me. It would turn sticky after a few weeks because the medium in Liquitex seems to be more hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture from the air around it. That's probably not a problem for a lot of people, but where I live, it's humid almost all year round. So the face-ups would be great for a couple weeks, and then the humidity would pick up and they would turn sticky and collect dust and it would ultimately ruin the face-up. Now, I did find a way to avoid that problem, which was to use Liquitex Matte Varnish for the base sealant and the progress layers and then finish with Mr. Super Clear. But that takes us back to using the toxic aerosols. I haven't had any issues with Vallejo varnishes turning tacky in high humidity, so they're my go-to for airbrushing now. The texture is super similar to that you get with aerosol sealants, and it's also a lot less picky about how you apply it. You can absolutely douse a head with this sealant and it'll still dry perfectly matte without any discoloration or hazing. And because it's made to air dry and is water-based, it's way less picky about humidity. There are other water-based varnishes I'd like to try that are made by companies like Golden, who I know has high quality products, so I'm sure that would work well. But one of the advantages to using Vallejo specifically is that it's a paint frequently used for models and gaming minis that get handled a lot, so I've found that it's actually more durable than some of the aerosol lacquers I've used and loved. There are also some versions that are ready for airbrushing that you don't have to do anything to. You can just pour it and immediately use it. Basically, the only downside is that you have to have an airbrush to apply it well. I understand that there are aerosol versions of it available in some countries, but the problem we cycle back to there is always that the fumes from aerosols can be dangerous if you don't use proper respiratory protection. As long as you're using an airbrush for the application of water-based paints, the only mask you really need is a particulate filter rated at 95 or above. Sometimes this is labeled P95, and it's usually N95, but it depends on branding and where you live. So my current airbrush is an Iwata Eclipse HPCS, and it's a gravity feed brush with a great big cup, and I love it. I've got a little cleaner pot for it, which I mostly use as a stand, but it's also helpful for emptying out the last of a color and letting me rinse the brush before I put in a new color of paint. I've been using the Vallejo Acrylic Matte Varnish 70.520, and I thin it using the airbrush thinner 71.261. You can also thin the varnish with water, but I like the airbrush thinner because it makes the paint less likely to dry on the needle. So I can spray longer without having to stop and clean the needle tip. I can get through a whole face up without stopping to clean the airbrush, which is great. I typically add enough varnish to do two layers of sealant at a time because sometimes that's all I can do before I have to stop and wait for a commissioner to get back to me. This time I can do a little more because I've been getting live feedback, so it lets me work a bit faster. Two or three drops of varnish is enough to seal an entire head at least once. I use half as much thinner as I do varnish, so if I do two drops of varnish, I'll add one drop of thinner. And this makes a perfect consistency to spray at about 25 to 30 PSI. 
I mix the thinner and varnish right in the cup using a small paintbrush, and that's it. Now it's ready to use. The first time I used this sealant, I wasn't sure my airbrush was working because even when it's wet, it's pretty matte. But even if you spray it so heavily that the whole head ends up wet and shiny, it'll still dry properly. It doesn't seem to cause any bleeding in colors, even in water-based paints like my gouache. But I've found it does make the colors appear a little more darker or intense than what I get with aerosol sealants. So just try to be a little more light-handed with pastels unless you're going for something really intense. It also dries really fast, which means you only have to wait 5 or 10 minutes between layers of a face-up, and that makes the whole process super fast. Even when the paints themselves are non-toxic and don't have fumes, you don't want to be breathing the spray because we as humans are just not made for that. There are some alcohol-based acrylics that you still want to wear a proper respirator for because they do have fumes. What that means is a respirator mask that fits snugly against your face with no air leaks, and is rated at at least OVP95, which means it filters out both organic vapors and airborne particles. A good way to make sure your respirator is properly fitted is to put it on without any cartridges on it. Then press your hands firmly over the holes where the cartridges attach. When you inhale, you should feel suction against your hand and the mask, but not get any air. That indicates your mask is airtight and ready to use. If you can smell any vapors when you're spraying aerosols or paints that emit fumes, stop and readjust your mask because it can't protect you if there's an air leak. If you choose to go the respirator route, you can use the same cartridges for quite a long time if all you're doing is face-ups. Storing them in airtight bags or containers will extend their life considerably. You can use the cartridges until you begin to smell the paint even when your respirator is properly fitted in airtight, or when it starts to feel difficult to breathe through it. Either of those things means the cartridges are spent and it's time to replace them. And if you're using non-toxic sealants like the one I'm using this time and you're just using an N95 mask, it's important to know that usage is a little different from the other uses we have for these masks these days. If all you're using it for is airbrushing, you can reuse the same mask over and over again until it becomes dirty, clogged, or stops fitting your face well. Basically, if it's misshapen, looks gross, or you're having a hard time breathing through it, it's time to retire the mask. But you can expect to use one N95 mask exclusively for airbrushing for at least a few months, unless you're doing an absolutely enormous number of face-ups. And that's just about everything. The only other thing I can think to mention is that the varnish can be cleaned off your hands or surfaces with soap and water while it's fresh, but once it's dry, it's water resistant and needs to be removed with rubbing alcohol or brush cleaner, same as what you'd use to remove a face-up from a doll. So yeah, if you have any other specific questions or concerns, you can leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.